and we're continuing from the previous video. The Caligula's assassination was a moment of opportunity for the uh, for the Senate to you know to rid themselves of of the Principate, but uh, you know the the opportunity is squandered because by this point everybody had been ruled over by the princeps uh, for you know a couple of generations. Um, you know, nobody remembered anything before that, and what and what there was to remember was horrible civil war, uh, and you know the dictatorship of Julius Caesar and so forth. Uh, and so, you know, even the people that spoke out after uh, Caligula's assassination and say, you know, we need to stop this, uh, you know, didn't gain any traction, and uh, you know, very quickly it was too late anyway because the Praetorian Guard. Uh, the the you know the bodyguards of the emperor uh, essentially forced the uh, the senate into recognizing the succession of Claudius um, because their loyalty was to the imperial family. Uh, Claudius was the brother of Germanicus, and so his choice was palatable, even though uh, his infirmities uh, he had, had kept him uh, hidden from sight. Uh, he had a club foot. He was deaf in one ear, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, the imperial family had kept him hidden away, but um, you know he was an able administrator, maybe a little too much a micromanager. Um, you know he uh, did a lot to establish a a functioning bureaucracy to keep the um, the need to run the uh, the empire uh, uh, out of the you know the the moment to moment uh, decisions of the emperor himself, uh, and so. Uh, for this, he uses his own freedmen. Uh, the ex-slaves within his uh, his family become uh, the administrators of the you know, the the day-to-day -day operations of 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 the principate, and this sort of helps to establish a precedent going forward that uh, it doesn't need to be all on the shoulders of the emperor himself. Um, when Claudius dies, he chooses not to make his own son uh, his successor, but adopts. A, a son uh, in the form of Nero. Uh, part of this is that it's engineered by his wife, uh, uh, Agrippina, uh, the younger, who uh, essentially goes about uh, everything that she does to ensure that uh, Nero can become emperor by her hand, and you know, in this way, she can become Augusta. Uh, and uh, you know, so there's even a statue that demonstrates. You know her placing the uh, the imperial wreath on her seventeen-year-old uh, son, but you know the Nero had seen what had happened with uh, Tiberius's uh, increasing dislike for everything going on in the Senate. Um, you know Caligula's uh, madness and his assassination, uh, and moreover, you know during his time as emperor, um, he's having to fight more and more wars on the frontiers. Uh, the which involves uh, you know generals gaining a lot of glory and so Nero Nero more than ever is uh, is paranoid is fearful of of what's going to um, you know endanger his position um, and uh, you know he's uh, 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 he essentially you know forces himself into a position of of. Um, by by acting in this paranoid way and by attempting to crush any of his enemies, he sort of becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, uh, you know, uh, especially as uh, you know, like Caligula, uh, he does very little to you know to guard his spending and to uh, to uh, to protect the imperial treasury, and so. Uh, you know, while the, the 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 empire as a whole prospers under Nero, um, you know everybody that's that's close by at Rome and sees what's happening is 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 fearful for the future. Uh, and this is one of the things that sort of helps to bring about uh, the 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 year of chaos that follows. Uh, there is a you know there is a a the feeling of a need. For somebody to step in and become, uh, to demonstrate strength, to demonstrate, uh, uh, you know, a proper, you know, emperorship, uh, and uh, this this is heard by and, and enthusiastically acted upon 
uh, various governors in the provinces. And so we have the succession, Galba, Otto, Vitellius, and finally Vespasian, of people that, that, that march into Rome, uh, that take over, but that don't have the faith of, of the entire constituency and are immediately, you know, overturned, you know, ruling a couple of months at a time before finally, um, you know, uh, Vespasian is able to take control. Uh, during this, this whole time, the Senate has demonstrated its complete failure uh, to act as the guardian of Rome. Um, the principle of uh, succession is now uh, in tatters. Uh, only uh, strength uh, seems to be uh, the, the, the means of of, of, uh, of, of, of moving forward in, in the uh, in the Roman Empire, this seems to be uh, uh, this, this seems to spell the end for for Rome. You know, this is only going to to generate further. Something is once again entirely broken, especially since, as Tacitus put it, um, the the secret of of empire is now revealed that that emperors can be made elsewhere than at Rome. Uh, all that really needs to happen is for uh, a legion in some province to decide that their commander, their general, would make a better emperor than whoever is is sitting in, in Rome claiming to be the princeps. And so uh, this happens over and over and over again. This is this is uh, has all the earmarks of descending into absolute anarchy. Um, what uh, saves the situation is uh, Vespasian. Uh, the um, Vespasian uh, has the support of the legions on the Danube and in Syria. He marches on Rome uh, and he establishes himself as, as princeps, as in the in the, in a very strict model. Um, a law is passed that says, ex for the first time, exactly what it means to be princeps. It, in it institutionalizes the principate for the first time. Um, and, you know, as, uh, you know, the, the, the models for this are to be like Augustus. Um, the, the title of Augustus is passed on from emperor to emperor, uh, and the, the, the actions of the emperor are supposed to be in accordance with the powers that Augustus had and the actions that Augustus took. And so Vespasian is able to uh, sort of reinvent the principate as something that is strong, that is stable. Um, he... Uh, 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 he uh, reconnects with the city of Rome through uh, a, a building program and through the creation of a civil service and in, in general um, ministers to all of the uh, constituencies of the, uh, uh, of the Principate. He rebuilds these bonds um, in, in such a way that uh, you know, the constituencies of the Principate uh, have their faith in uh, in in him as as the princeps and in this newly institutionalized uh, newly solidified idea of the principate, um, uh, uh, this is all restored, and you know as a result of this, we're able to uh, have a succession of, of emperors that are uh, reasonably successful. Uh, the uh, his his immediate successors are his own sons Titus and Domitian. Um, you know, uh, both of them are good generals. Uh, you know, Domitian is is hated by the Roman elite. Um, he is uh, he is arrogant. He is overproud. Uh, he ends up being murdered in a palace cons uh, conspiracy. Uh, this sort of um, uh, reaffirms the idea that blood succession is is wrong for the principate. That uh, the the principle of adoption of an heir uh, it needs to be the the way to ensure that there's a good chance the next emperor will be who Rome and the empire need him to be. So uh, Nerva. Is is an elderly senator who's made uh, princeps uh, as the as a sort of the opposite of Domitian, and he makes sure to uh, adopt um, a a a a, uh, um, a a good successor, and in fact the um, the 
the the immediate successors of Nerva, uh, the the next uh, set of emperors are described in Roman history as the five good emperors because these are people who are are well chosen. Uh, who uh, are working to make the Prince of it work, not just for their own glory, not just to indulge in their own um, uh, in their own whims or their in their in their own uh, sensualities, uh, but uh, who are actually installed in this position in, in order to take care of Rome, to take care of their own people, to take care of the provinces, uh, and so. We have uh, um, uh, a Trajan who is, uh, uh, you know, um, who campaigns to strengthen the frontiers, and and Hadrian who takes this one step further, uh, who travels the empire personally to uh, to visit the provinces, uh, to um, to reform uh, things that aren't working well, to administer justice, uh, to build cities, uh, um, to uh, to invest in in the idea of Romanization. Um, uh, uh, under Hadrian, what's been uh, what's becoming more and more clear is that uh, the, uh, the 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 empire had been centered on centers of population, and so the the focus of Rome and the influence of Rome sort of recedes outward from you know the the centers of population, and so the the Roman Empire had not been you know lines on a map. The Roman Empire had been you know sort of a fluid idea. Of, you know the, the the people and where they're focused, and and you know the, the the process of them becoming invested in the Roman economy and drawn into uh, Roman culture. But uh, uh, by the time we get to Hadrian, we're seeing something else. Um, you know, the uh, um, the instead of a, a aggressive war, uh, Hadrian's strategy is 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 of shoring up the frontiers, um, of um, of seeing the uh, the the protection of the empire um, through the uh, through the guarding of of borders. Of Rome, and you know, so this helps to uh, um, facilitate and accelerate the process of Romanization within those boundaries. And Roman legions tend to be sort of stationed along the frontiers. In some places, even walls are built, such as Hadrian's Wall in the uh, in the north of England. Uh, uh, and uh, beyond those, the the these border legions beyond these frontiers, beyond these walls. Is is other um, beyond them is is them is the barbarians uh, to a certain extent they uh, they have contact with the Romans they trade with the Romans they're aware of Roman um, goods and uh, ways of Roman ways of fighting uh, you know the contact isn't cut off but the the mentality of the Roman Empire becomes uh, uh, us and them. Uh, and and Hadrian is is uh, is implementing a a you know a policy of of protecting these boundaries uh, and ensuring that uh, that within it is is flourishing. And so the administration of the provinces excels during this time. Um, the building of bureaucracy, uh, um, you know, legal reforms, uh, the 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 spread of Roman law throughout all the Roman territories, all this stuff, um, you know, uh, and the principle of succession. The uh, the 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 idea of the Roman Empire is 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 humming, is 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 functioning um, extremely well. Uh, but this the, the us and them mentality is breeding seeds of problems for the future. Uh, uh, under Antoninus Pius and 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 Marcus Aurelius, we have um, the empire at its greatest. Marcus Aurelius is is practically Plato's idea of the philosopher king. Uh, um, you know, and so uh, he governs uh, the the Roman Empire with uh, as much an, an effort as possible to um, to administer from the the standpoint of enlightenment the problem is that uh, that you know uh, the, from every high point there is a uh, there is a, a road going down the other side of the hill um, you know only a few decades after Marcus Aurelius uh, everything breaks down 
uh, in the course of uh, what's known as the third century crisis. Um, the, uh, the, we have a revolving door of, of emperors as uh, generals rise up, uh, march on Rome and take the emperorship away from each other. The, the economy starts to shudder uh, and um, you know, institutions start to break down. Uh, you know, barbarians start to invade and take territory away from Rome. Um, the, the whole system starts to collapse during the third century. Uh, it uh, it rises up and restabilizes something else, as we'll talk about it uh, in a future video. But the third century crisis is the end of um, the the principate as Augustus had imagined it, and uh, Vespasian had reinvented it, uh, and as Marcus Aurelius and the the good emperors around him had perfected it. And so um, we'll see uh, the the way in which the Roman Empire uh, existed and the kind of um, a uh, kind of world that it inhabited in the next video for now. That's that.